They say a dog is man's best friend, but finding the right canine companion starts with finding an ethical breeder. Irresponsible breeding practices could lead to health issues or anxious temperaments in certain dogs. Morgan Weber of Lucky Pup Adventures is here to share her top tips for selecting a breeder who aligns with your values. She knows that identifying a reputable dog breeder is crucial if you want your parent, a puppy parent journey to start off on the right paw. Yeah, the right paw. The right paw, That's yes. That's right. Well, so see, this, who is this? This is Archie. Thanks so much for having <laughs> us. Course, um, so Archie is actually available through Bee Squad Rescue. So if anybody at home thinks they might want to bring a little beagle into their house, he might be a good option. Wow. So I why are you with Archie today? Yes, yeah, so I'm with Archie today because I'm really passionate about helping people find an ethical breeder if that's the route that they want to go. Mm -hmm. There are so many amazing dogs who are in rescues or who come from breeders, but we want to make sure that we're making choices where we're helping support, like kind of like you said at the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, our values. And um, there's more to owning a dog than just giving them food and water. We want to give them a great life. And part of that comes from, again, where do we get our dogs and maybe what kind of health issues might they be predisposed to if we are working with people maybe who aren't making those um, extra steps to make sure they're giving us the most healthy dogs. And Archie is a rescue, but he's a yes. rescue because he came from a breeder that he did. didn't want him or couldn't sell him. Exactly, yeah. So right. This is where this is all kind of coming back to what you need to look for. Yeah, exactly. Full circle. So full let's, circle. let's talk about some of the red flags that you should look for uh, in a breeder. You know, the red yes. flags, the problems. Exactly. So I like to ask breeders a lot of questions. So you can see, you know, is there a health guarantee? Is there um, a, a contract clause that says if you can't keep the dog anymore, that the dog has to come back to them? That's a great way to keep... Um, pets out of rescues and out of shelters. Mm. Um, and, you know, at, if people say yes to everyone who asks for a puppy, that might be a red flag because they might not be taking the puppy's temperament or that breed into consideration. So if you have somebody who just wants to hang out at the end of the day after they get home from work, a really active dog breed is probably not the best choice for them. But if they go to a breeder that just says yes to everybody, mm. again, they're not helping make those lifelong success choices and we want to make sure that we set ourselves up the best we can for long-term success with our dogs yeah, yeah. we noticed uh, let you uh, let you pick the puppy yes. uh, explain that one we to were us. confused yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know and everyone says well I want to be able to pick my own puppy right I know right. I want to pick the cutest puppy or the one that comes to me that we're meant to be together sure. and sometimes that puppy might not be the best temperament choice so if you maybe have a lot of kids in your house or you've got a lot of friends that come over you want to make sure you're getting a puppy who's really confident and wants to meet new people Whereas the puppy that's a little bit more shy might not be the best choice because they probably aren't going to enjoy a lot of people kind of coming in and out. So you're saying a good breeder knows the puppies well, they know temperaments well, exactly. and they're going to help you match with the right puppy as opposed to just saying whatever puppy you want. Exactly, yes. Uh, we even had a few other red flags, I think. Yes. Um, there were even more red flags that we were talking about earlier, too. So it's not just about, you know, uh, what you've gone over so far. Yes. It's even it's even further than that, you know? Yeah, and another question that I really like to ask breeders is, um, or anyone that you're getting a pet from, is, you know, what happens if you don't sell all of the puppies? You know, what happens when, you know, your breeding dogs are retiring? Mm. Do you have a home for them? Do they stay with you? Or are you just not, you don't really know what's going to happen to them? Or in some cases, those dogs just get destroyed or they get dumped at rescues or shelters. So we really want to, you know, again, is somebody being conscientious to the gift that dogs are to us? Or are they kind of taking a little more approach where this is just a commodity to them and it's not this awesome little puppy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so preservation breeders is something yes. that's new to me. I, I haven't yes. heard of that. So I was really interested to read up on this. Tell us a bit more about what a preservation breeder is. Yeah. So essentially a preservation breeder is somebody who's taking the purpose of the dog. So like, for example, Archie's a beagle. So somebody who maybe who is still into like beagle hunt, you know, hunting with beagles, or they take the scenting skills mm -hmm. that beagles have, and they're trying to um, improve on that. They're trying to find great homes for these dogs. They're trying to have great temperaments. I know he just just wants to go say hi. Come we're gonna, say hi. Yeah, we'll let him go say hi. Come say hi. Um, and so they have a real purpose behind what they're doing. And a lot of these um, people are also doing um, extra health testing. So a lot of times we think of health testing, we think, oh, I just need to go to the vet, and the vet says my dog is healthy. But a preservation breeder actually takes the extra step. Their dogs are seeing ophthalmologists and cardiologists and getting x-rays to make sure their hips and their joints are all, all good. So they're not going to potentially pass on 
um, a potentially life-threatening issue onto a set of puppies that they don't know exists unless they take those extra steps. So there's actually a list for every breed out there. There's a breed club, and that breed club puts together a list of health issues that are common in that particular breed and that they should be health tested for. Oh. So there's a lot of these extra steps that a preservation breeder will do to make sure, again, that they're helping um, give people a lifetime of health and happiness with their pets and not just how many puppies can we create so that way we can get puppies into everybody's home. So and there's a different approach. We talked to our, our friend Maggie with Tenacious Dog Training yes. too about the different roles and jobs dogs have. We just yes. did that recently. And that's probably another reason why breeding and preservation breeding is important because there are dogs meant to do jobs that are really essential to yes. our day to day. And so while we do say rescue and adopt is, is a wonderful thing to do, there are really some great purposes for breeding. Absolutely, yes. And you know, and some of it is just cr um, getting dogs who have an amazing oh, temperament or who have a lot of um, really good experiences Maggie? early in life. And you know, there are a lot of great um, dogs who come into rescue at very young puppies, and they can also get those great experiences <laughs> early in life. But it's really, again, just setting puppies up for the best possible success, and then setting up their, their people for the best possible success as well. So let's talk about more reasons to, to be selective about your breeder. Yes. Absolutely. So, you know, again, kind of we talked about making sure that they're doing early socialization um, and they can be a wonderful resource for you. So especially if it's a breed who's a little bit newer to you, making sure that you know all of the things that you might not quite know at the beginning. So, right. you know, one thing, too, is a great resource that I like to use Instagram. So if there's like a kind of breed that you might like to follow, I try to find those different kinds of pets on Instagram and just follow along and try to get an idea if that's maybe a type of dog that I might be interested in usually you get to see some of the shenanigans that they get into. <laughs> Um, but then also that breeder is going to be a lifelong resource. If you have questions, if you're maybe running into issues, they can help you troubleshoot. Um, and again, if you ever do need to bring your dog back for any reason, they are there to take that dog for you. So again, it's not ending up in a rescue or in a so shelter. That's really key that they should have a lifelong return your dog. Yes. You I yep. love that. I've never even heard of that. That's really an important piece mm -hmm. of that, I think. I also like that it takes them all the way to retirement, that they yes. think that through. Yeah, they should have a whole plan, right? Again, mm -hmm. um, if someone has say they're breeding 10 different dogs. Well, again, are those 10 dogs gonna stay with them? Are they gonna find new loving homes? Right. Or do they kind of just get sent to shelters or do they get destroyed at the end? And that's not a, a great long-term solution. What kind of family would be great for Archie here? Yeah. Oh my gosh, Archie is a busy guy, if you can't tell. Yeah. So <laughs> he would love, if there's another dog in the home that he can play with, he loves playing with our dogs. Um, he seems to be pretty good with kids too. So he would like, you know, just, Again, someone to be active with him and who can um, put up with his beagle shenanigans. He <laughs> loves food. He loves sniffing things out. I so, yeah, he's fun. He's a fun little guy. And he's available. And he you're fostering right now. Yes. So he's in good hands. He's in pretty good care. hands. We're, right. we're learning some things. So right. he should be a pretty good addition to a home. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so thank, thank you so you guys. much. Yes.